What up? Welcome back to the novelist with Back to Hat Guy here. We're going to continue into chapter 7 The Vacation. So, last time we uh, found out that uh, the family wants to take a, maybe a weekend trip somewhere. And of course, each one of them wants to do different things. So let's check this out. We got Dan. He says, let's just grab some firewood, build a bonfire, and camp on the beach. Linda wants to actually go out camping. That's why she brought her camping pack. Tommy, uh, they said my rocket makes it free at Booster Bay. So he wants to go to Booster Bay at an amusement park. I think this time... We're going to go... Can I not... Is that light off? It must be off. As we found out last time, there's a few of these lights that have been turned off. So like that one's off. That one appears to be off. There's old Tommy. But it was uh, anyways, I think this time we're gonna go with Dan's idea. Um, what do you say? Firewood. Where's their firewood? Um, so this is the other part. Oh, right there, but yep. Okay, so we're gonna select that in just a moment. Um, just one quick thing though. The one thing that kind of drives me nuts about this. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, however, if you found a desired icon, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we go. The firewood. So by doing this, hopefully, we'll give Dan a little extra time to. Work on his book. Um, and uh, so now we're here at nighttime and we can uh, explore the house freely and search for more clues about the house. Here we go, right here. Let's check this out Diary of Claire Bradford, September 5th, 1961. So this is what, 13 years after? Uh, the other letters that we had found. Uh, so Claire ba Bladf Bradford, the Claire Bradford, maybe getting my thoughts down on paper will help. Make a list. That's what Mom always taught me. So, dear diary, here are all the wonderful things about Roger. He's very handsome. He'll soon be working as a lawyer at his father's firm, though the job is no gift. He worked so hard in college. He might be the only person on earth who loves music as much as me. He especially loves the songs I write him. His family has money, which of course shouldn't matter, but it's nice to feel secure. Who wouldn't want to marry someone like that? Interesting. So it sounds like she's trying to convince herself that she wants to marry this guy. Which isn't something that should really ever be something you have to convince yourself of dinner this week. Oh, interesting. That was still there from before. Um, hmm. So I was going to say, uh, one thing that kind of I've learned, uh, we've learned obviously through this game is when you make a decision for one family member, it really, well, it really all hinges around Dan. So, but whenever you make a decision for one, it it just negative it automatically negatively impacts the other two family members, which is a little bit annoying to be honest, because that's not how real life happens. <laughs> you know, a decision can affect multiple people positively, or it can make affect multiple people negatively, or you know, a mix. Some people positively, some people negatively. So a lot of the decisions I made in this are based on the fact that there is some logic, uh, some kind of real life logic, which hasn't really happened. So it'll be interesting to see how we go on from here. So for now, we're doing Dan, which is gonna obviously negative input, negatively impact Linda and Tommy. But I'm still searching for some clues about the house. It does look beautiful in the cage. So she feels like she's trapped here. Which again, 
Hmm. She shouldn't, because she's been out doing her art stuff. Here we go. Claire da uh, Diary of Claire Bradford, September 6th, 1961. Don't know why, but I feel like I can really get my thoughts together here. That's why this entry isn't going to be very fun, but fair is fair. I've already waited a day, and there's no use delaying it longer. Here are the no here are the not so wonderful things about Roger. He can be self absorbed, especially when he's working on something. No one will ever accuse him of having a great sense of humor. He's so very predictable. Sometimes this makes me feel secure, other times I just feel so bored. I wonder if maybe he spends too much time chasing his father and not enough being his own man. There. Now I feel rotten. I do love him very much. Everyone has their flaws. Are his so bad? Interesting. So Claire is having some second thoughts about getting married to this guy. We'll see how that kind of ties in more to the overall story later, I'm sure. Um, so we chose Dan, and now I'm gonna think I'm gonna go with Tommy. So we're gonna choose Tommy's compromise. So let's see how we compromise with that. And uh, so yeah, so let's see uh, how this is gonna turn out. Dan put his book first and explained that he simply didn't have time for a longer trip. He tried to make it up to them with a one night beach camping trip where he happened to get a new idea for his book. The night off relaxed him and by noon the next day he was back at his typewriter working with renewed purpose. Alright, that's good. Tommy was so proud of finding the free admission special for Booster Bay that he couldn't understand why his parents hadn't taken him for free. Dan tried to explain the reasons but it did little good. Tommy perked up when his father told him that he would, they would go before the summer was out, no matter what it cost. Alright, that's a good, good compromise. Linda was disappointed that they didn't go camping in Ochoco, so she went on a day hike by herself just to get out of the house and try to get some use from her new pack. She was only an hour into her hike when she twisted her ankle on a tree root and had to limp back home in pain, alone and angry. Oh. That's that kind of stinks. So here we go, chapter eight, the show. Linda got a letter in the mail. The <laughs> all right, well, there we go. That wraps up chapter seven, and uh, we will jump into chapter eight next time. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.